My name is Javier Teseta. I have the privilege of representing the 31st Congressional District based in Los Angeles, California, and Washington, D.C. as the representative. Uh, I am flanked by several representatives of health care providers, uh, people obviously as well as individuals who access the health care system, and we are here to talk about health care reform and the fact that for the first time in close to 100 years, we can actually say that we did health care reform for America. Now, we passed legislation. The President signed the two bills last, or about a week ago. But that doesn't mean all of a sudden the miracle has occurred. What we find is that now we have the tools in place to begin to give Americans the security they want when it comes to taking care of themselves and their families. But we have a lot of work to do. And that's why we assembled here today. I'm going to try to convene as often as possible with all the stakeholders involved in healthcare here in the LA area who are interested in helping Congress make sure that this healthcare reform works for America. And that means getting the best ideas from the practitioners, hearing the most important stories from the consumers of healthcare, and also finding out the best ideas on how to put the best practices in place when it comes to health care. I can tell you that as a congressman for the 31st Congressional District, there will be an immediate impact on the residents of the 31st Congressional District. There is perhaps no district in America, Congressional District, of the 435 Congressional Districts that service our country. There is perhaps no district that will have more people who will gain access to health insurance in this country than in the 31st Congressional District. Over 200,000 people have been identified as needing health insurance who will, as a result of this legislation, have access to quality, affordable health care. Now, that's going to come, but what we know is there are a number of questions that people have now. If I'm a small businessman or woman, can I afford to offer this coverage to my employees? If I am someone who has a pre-existing condition, Will I now be able to get health insurance from any insurance company in America? If I have children who are studying in college and are 23, 24, 25, 26 years of age, will they still have access to health insurance through my policy? All those questions we want to begin to answer for the American public and certainly for the Angelinos. I want to introduce first someone who is a practitioner as a nurse, but someone who is also a consumer of health care, someone who suffered a stroke and had to access the system beyond what she knew as a nurse. And let her tell you a little bit about what she faced and hopefully what she will see coming forward as a result of this health legislation. I'd like to introduce to you Laura Gutierrez. Good morning and thank you Congressman Becerra. My name is Laura Gutierrez and yes, in 1999 I did suffer a stroke. Uh, through the trials and tribulation of healing and trying to go back to work, I realized very shortly afterwards that I was not able to participate and work in the cr uh, critical care field as I had once hoped to. Um, I lost my insurance and I was forced to go on COBRA. Seeing the outrageous amount that I would have to pay monthly in order to continue having health care I had to deal with the realization of dropping that coverage and becoming one of the uninsured uh, persons in the United States without medical coverage. I had to access what was there locally and going into clinics to get the medications that I needed and try to complete some kind of health care schedule or reform that I needed in order to live and to survive. Before this bill, there were no options, and now we're probably going to be seeing a lot of options. I am one face in mil of the millions that are out there that have no health care insurance, and I want to make sure that not only will it be affordable, but it will be accessible to everyone. Um, this bill is not perfect, but it opens dialogues, and it opens dialogues that were never there before, and I would like to see this as a beginning. Uh, the possibility of opening it up to other options, to uh, public option options, to include alternative medication, um, and also to include dental health. I feel that uh, with this beginning that we can have health care for all, and I thank you for this time. Laura, thank you. I'd now like to introduce 
a man who has helped provide health care to a lot of people in Los Angeles as a result of the success of the South Central Family Health Center, which is located within my congressional district in South Los Angeles. Uh, Richard Veloz has been working for quite some time on the issues of health care, both as a policymaker and now as an administrator of a very successful center, health care center here in Los Angeles, and I'd like Richard to come forward. Thank you. Uh, my name is Richard Veloz. I'm the CEO of South Central Family Health Center, and I'm happy to be here to not only congratulate, congratulate the congressman, but for the Health Bill Recovery Act and what we've been able to do now. Because what this bill is going to do for community clinics is tremendous. Over $11 billion over the next five years are going to go to community clinics like ours in Los Angeles County. In fact, over 161 community clinics in Los Angeles County will be doubling the number of patients that they currently see. We're very excited about this. In addition to the funding that clinics like ours, as well as the Royal Vista, here have received uh, through the President's Recovery Act, we've been able to support more and more patients who uh, need this kind of health care and are very in, uh, in need. One of the other things, too, that's very important is that most of our areas that we serve, or the various poor, uh, poorest of the poor, are areas that have small businesses. And small businesses are so important for all of us. The people that go to these small businesses currently many times don't have insurance because they can't afford it. Now they're going to be able to afford insurance, they're going to be able to have health care coverage and come to our clinics that we'll be able to see. So we are very, very excited about this and we hope to see uh, even more uh, issues related to prevention and a follow-up with this bill. And if you've ever been into in the Children's Hospital before, when you walk out you can't help but feel inspired because of what you see. Gail Margolis is here representing Children's Hospital and I'd like her to step forward. Thank you very much. Gail Marvellos, obviously, Children's Hospital Los Angeles. Um, I'm delighted with the passage of this bill. Um, one of the first benefits that we're going to see is the end of discrimination towards children with pre-existing conditions. Those children will now be able to have insurance forever. We are primarily um, filled with Medi-Cal children, and you think that it's only the poor, but there are many families that lose their insurance, that run out of insurance, that lose their job because they're taking care of their children, and that's when they get on Medi-Cal. And now these children will be covered by insurance. In addition, um, there are about 1.3 uninsured persons in Los Angeles County. Half of them are young adults. And those children, they're always your child, whether they're 23, 24, 25, 26, they'll be able to stay on their parents' policy, which is incredibly important. We see a lot of chronic children that their disease doesn't disappear when they turn 18 and their insurance disappears. So it's very important that we continue to cover those um, people. So we're absolutely thrilled. Thank you very much. The next person I'd like to introduce is someone who works day in, day out on the ground, making sure that all these folks that we talk about get their care. And he's a consummate professional and someone who over the years can claim to have kept a lot of people healthy, including me, because he happens to be my doctor as well. <laughs> I'm very pleased to have someone who's been a longtime friend, but also a tremendously important asset to the Los Angeles area as a physician, Dr. Hector Flores. Thank you, Congressman Becerra, and, and I join everyone in thanking you for your leadership to make this legislation possible. Uh, I, I come as a, a family physician who is uh, part of a medical group working in private practice in East Los Angeles, really joined hand in hand with the community clinics who are represented here today and the entire community of community clinics. Um, and also we represent uh, a nexus or an access point to the specialty care that the community clinics and their patients and our patients need. And I think that what the legislation will do is help us organize our care around accountable care organizations so that we can provide the best care to the most vulnerable populations. What I really find um, exceptional in the new legislation is that the fact that it, it prohibits insurance companies from unfairly canceling the insurance coverage of patients once they become sick, put restrictions on annual and lifetime benefits that patients have. Uh, the other component of it is really recognizing that we can't improve access without workforce development. And this significant legislation will, will really make, do much to expand our ability to provide and train the culturally competent workforce that America needs. And lastly, it really preserves Medicare. Medicare for our elderly, and it also utilizes the experience of Medicare to become the model for a national program of health for our nation. And finally, I'd like to introduce someone who has done a great deal of work in servicing Angelinos, but sometimes, as many of us have known, because we grew up as the children of immigrants, or we have grown up 
not always having access to quality professional care. Uh, we sometimes resort to those that we feel most comfortable with and we have most confidence in. Aaron Pack happens to be the director of a program that services a large number of Korean Americans who are in this uh, city of Los Angeles, but also a lot of Latinos who are in this country, most of whom come from immigrant backgrounds. Many of them would not have access to services were it not for the organization CARE, the center that uh, she helps direct and fund. And so I'd like Aaron Pack to please come forward and tell us a little bit about what health care through this legislation means for that, this portion of Los Angeles that she serves. Thank you, Congressman. This is a landmark legislation for um, communities of color, especially the immigrant community that we serve. Um, we're dealing with underserved, underinsured population that is afraid of preventive health or any type of preventive screenings. We have the highest mortality rates uh, in diseases that have treatments if found early. Um, as a result of this legislation, we will be able to provide access to quality health to the immigrant population. I'm hoping that with the population that I specifically serve, we will no longer have hepatitis B because people will not be afraid of being denied insurances for the pre-existing conditions. It's a disease that they no longer have to hide behind. So congratulations, Congressman, congratulations to all of us who um, do our best every day to increase access to quality health care for the underserved population. Let me just mention a couple of things. These are numbers that were given as a result of the census and the Department of Health and Human Services. But if you take my congressional district, and my congressional district is solely within the city of Los Angeles. It's about 650,000 people, stretching from Eagle Rock at its northern portion down into South Central LA at its southern portion. 650,000 people around, the estimate is that somewhere around 200,000 people in my district have private health insurance. Many of them have access to care as a result of the government provided insurance that they have through Medicare if they're seniors or Medi-Cal if they're modest income. But the estimates are that through this legislation, another 200,000 people will qualify for private insurance to have access to health care. So essentially, I am doubling the number of people in my congressional district in the city of Los Angeles who will have access to quality health care simply by having passed this legislation. That means that every one of those professionals that just came and spoke are probably going to see not just the patients they typically see, but those patients coming with money in their pocket to pay for their care, which means the clinics, the hospitals, the doctors, having been paid by some of these patients who before did not have the money to pay or the insurance to pay. Now those providers have more money available to expand their facilities, to hire more physicians, to do more of the work for those who are coming through their doors. We're going to benefit dramatically from this. We have a lot of work to do to make it work right, but with professionals like those that are standing behind me, I think we can make this happen. And you have to feel very proud that in the year 2010, we were able to do what all presidents from Teddy Roosevelt on forward were not able to do. And so I thank those who were so instrumental in helping us move forward this chance to tell America we're going to provide them quality, affordable health care. 